Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some daisies uh, with kind of a blurry background and a little ladybug. It'll be um, a fun project, I think, and I'll show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's here for uh, watching the chat, and if you've got questions, you can ask those to him, and he, he will tr answer them <laughs> for me, or <laughs> pass them along, and I'll try to answer them, too. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know <laughs> why I can't talk tonight. All right, let's get started. <laughs> I need to stick to the script. I was trying to like change it up a little bit. And I, yeah, I was trying to riff a little yeah. bit, and I just kind of lost my way. I think you a little late last night. <laughs> at the well, concert. I got like four hours sleep, so <laughs> we're working. It'll be an interesting show. <laughs> All right, I've got a nine by twelve inch canvas panel from Fredericks. This is the linen uh, boards that I like to use, and I haven't done anything to it. It's pre gessoed, so it's all ready to go. I'm going to be using a few brushes for the background. I'm not really sure exactly what we're going to want, but um, if you've got like a large flat, um, this is a two inch paddle. So I'll probably be using that for some of just the very background. And then I've got a number 12 bright and number eight filbert um, for some of the blurred effects on top of the background. And then I've got, so let me see, a couple of Willow's blenders and the uh, De Deerfoot stippler, just some sort of a stiff bristled brush for some of the blurry daisies. These are the quarter inch and three eighths inch and three eighths inch uh, Deerfoot stippler. And then I've got some filberts that we're going to want for our daisy petals. So those are like the rounded tip brushes. I've got a number four and a number six, just depending on the size that you want for your daisy. And a number f a quarter inch angle shader for the stems of the flowers. And then I've got a couple of small brushes for our day, uh, ladybug. So we've got a number one round, number two aught round, and a number five aught spotter. Um, these are all Princeton brushes, and I've got links down in the description to all the brushes and materials that we're using. So thank you to Princeton and to Fredericks, our sponsors for our products. And they provide our materials for tonight. Let's go over our colors really quick. I've got uh, cadmium red medium, cadmium red light for our ladybug, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light, thalo green, yellow shade, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, carbon black. This is glazing liquid. That'll just make our black background uh, go on a little smoother. And I've got titanium white. Uh, this is the same. It's just liquid form and then unbleached titanium. So the liquid form of the titanium white, if you've got the, the golden um, fluid acrylics or like a, a craft acrylic that's a, a like more fluid paint, it can actually uh, be a little bit easier to do the daisies petals with that. So if you've got that, I would recommend using it. All right, let, let's get started here. Let's do this. <laughs> We're off to a rough start, but I think I recovered, so I think we're going to be okay. It's hopefully. off to, it's sometimes good to go off script. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. I was just thinking, I said I always say the same thing, so maybe like try something different, but no, it kind of went off the rails real quickly there. So. Yeah, but that's what I like about other YouTubers. What? You know what they're going to say on the intro. <laughs> <laughs> so I sprayed my canvas with water just to kind of wet it down since we're going to be doing this kind of blended effect. The, the water will give us a little bit extra drying time. And I'm also going to use a little bit of glazing liquid. And I grabbed the unbleached titanium here with my large paddle. You could use the sponge brush for this if you don't have this large fancy brush. Um, sponge brush will work just fine. And I'm going to grab some yellow there. It's awfully bright. So I really want it a lot lighter than that. In fact, I am going to just grab my titanium and white, titanium white, and put out a pretty big glob of it right there. Oh, we already got a pink question. Yes, do it. They said that uh, they only have phthalo green blue shade. Okay. Do we have fine. to add yellow to it to have a yellow shade? Yes. Yes, that's ding, all you ding, have to do. I, I need a bell. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yep, that's all you need to do. They're very similar. It's just one's a little bit more blue, one's a little bit more yellow. So, um, just a little bit more water there. 
And I want this paint to be slightly fluid. I don't want it to be super thick and it'll go on a little bit easier. Oh, that's a really pretty color. So just a very pale yellow here. And like I said, my paint, my canvas is just a little bit damp. So I don't want to like sopping wet. Just one spray, one or two at the most will be, will be fine. And I'm going to kind of do it at an angle here. So the bottom kind of uh, diagonal here is kind of more greenish. And then this upper corner is this really pale yellow and I'm going to get even more white here and just add that in so I feel like it's even just a little bit yellow too bright okay this large paddle makes it super easy to get that paint on quickly I really like them this is the red line brushes and I've requested them uh, the brush guys to add them I'm not 100% sure if they've added them to my list yet but they I did re, um, contact them so if they're not on there yet they should be there soon hopefully okay so once I get mostly covered with yellow I left a little bit of the bottom here now I'm going to get a little bit more glazing liquid and just touch the very corner of my brush just a tiny bit of green see how little I have there that's all you're going to need just a little hint of green maybe a little bit of blue That's it. We want to keep this background really pale because we want our, if we don't, if we don't leave it pale enough, uh, we won't be able to see our daisies up against, um, or the daisy stems. I mean, um, if we do it too dark, those daisy stems are pretty light or kind of a medium green, you know. So we just want a kind of a hint of green back here to start with. And I'm going to have you dry this pretty quick here. Oh. Yeah. You're over there snacking, <laughs> munching in the corner. What? Uh, all right, I'm going to get a little bit of yellow on the corner that I did not get wet. And I'm going to put a little bit back here. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off, just get most of that paint off of it on a clean towel. And then just kind of brush back and forth. Okay, can you go back? that end lightly. Back over which brush that Oops. is. This is the. Um, I'm making a mess here. <laughs> you look like you're about four years old. <laughs> you're just painting. I'm having fun. Paint everywhere. I know. I was telling my friend that I went to the concert with. So and you're like, happy you're wearing a dress. I have so much fun painting. It's, it's almost <laughs> like not a job. I feel a little guilty that we even make money at this because <laughs> I would be doing this anyways. So Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, the Patreon, you know, it's changed the game for us. So, <laughs> so anyways, nice, back, yeah. back to the brush. Okay. Uh, the brush is the number, the two inch red line. Okay. And it's the paddle, it's called. And paddle. you're trying to add it to your brush guys list. It should be on there. If it's not, then it should be soon. If it's, yeah, if it's not already. All right, I'm going to let you have this, honey. So we didn't really do anything super fancy to this. It's just mostly uh, mostly yellow. Nice. She's guarding it for us. She's guarding the door. Okay, be careful. It's going to get paint all over you. Try to clean up. I'm not even going to. I'm just going to dip this paint brush into the water and leave it on a damp paper towel until I can clean it and just keep make sure that I keep it wet and wipe off most of the paint that I can get off of it um, and then I don't want to try to clean it out in here there's just too much paint caught up in this this thing holds a lot of paint so um, if I just kind of keep it wet and sort of set it off to the side I can clean it out later and make sure that it stays wet um, and with acrylic brushes, you want to make sure that you clean them, even if they look like they're clean, even if you've cleaned them out in your cup of water. Um, don't let them dry out with paint in them, because if the paint dries in this silver part here, they will fray, and then it's almost impossible to get it out. So even though this part, the, the upper part, looks clean um, in your water jar and you, you know, run it against the side and you don't see any paint coming out, um, if you 
test it on a paper towel. I usually get, like keep white paper towels, and if you press down on it, and you you'll see color right along that line here, and then you know that it's not it, there's still paint in there. So um, that's one way you can test. And even after I clean my brushes really well with, um, I just use regular dish soap to do it, um, and uh, use my palm and just go back and forth like this. And I just have a big daub of, of uh, soap in my palm, and I wet down my brush just a little bit, and then I um, just kind of wiggle it side to side as I'm pulling. Like, don't press down and and um, force your brush down like this or bend the bristles. Um, they can actually break off right here if you um, crunch them the wrong way or if you're, like, pushing up this way, up against them. Um, against the way they want to um, lay. So I always kind of pull as I'm kind of wiggling from side to side. What I'm trying to do is press that soap up into this area. And so I'm kind of dabbing like this and really pressing down hard, but always kind of pulling as I'm pressing down hard so that um, those bristles are staying um, laying the right way. And uh, I never want to bend them the opposite way. And then once I kind of think that I've kind of worked up a good lather, then I will rinse it out really good. And I actually hold it under the water and, and go like this, spread those bristles out so that the water can get down in there. And um, I'll do it two or three times for each brush, especially large brushes or brushes that I think that the paint's gotten down in there. I'll clean them that way two or three times before I um, check them on my white paper towel to see if there's still paint in there. And sometimes, like my angle brushes, for some reason, I think I use them so often. And um, the paint, they're just, especially on this short side, it's just easy to, for that paint to get down in here. So I tend to have to wash my angle brushes out two to three times before they're completely clean. So just know that that's completely normal. But take the time to do that or you will ruin a really good brush because you're going to pay, you know, three or four dollars, sometimes five or six for a good brush, you know, the bigger brushes are going to be up to $20 or so. Um, and so you want to take care of them. So little sidebar brush, brush talk there. All right. So we, this is what we've got. Um, it dried a little bit darker. So you can see, you know, uh, it, uh, this is pretty, pretty close to the color I wanted. I think it, it did pretty good. So I'm happy with this. And I'm going to grab one of my, I'm actually going to go ahead and use this brush now. Um, the one that I was kind of showing you on, my example brush here. And I'm going to grab my Thalo, or yeah, my Thalo green. And a little bit of burnt sand. I'm going to see if I can get a color. Yeah, that's pretty. And I'm going to add yellow to it so it's not dark it's we're going to add this background yellow to it so mix up a little bit more of this yellow than you think you need so that you'll have some to do this with and try to keep this moist just by spraying it i use how i have a spray bottle um and this is this is a new one that i just got and i'm really liking it because it's a it's actually made for your hair um it's a fine mister super fine mister so it makes uh it doesn't leave those big globbed water uh droplets on my palette like my other one used to so I am liking it pretty well and I they don't pay me it's not a plug for any particular brand I just <laughs> just have started to use it and it seems to be working for me so that's an in case you want to know that I don't know unplugged endorsement Anybody cares yeah exactly <laughs> I like that unplugged unplugged <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab a little glazing liquid. So I put down the color there. I'm going to grab a little glazing liquid on a clean brush here. I'm just going to go kind of back and forth over that and see if I can kind of blend that in a little bit. I'm not sure this is kind of a new, I haven't tried this before, so I'm just going to see if this works. Yeah, it's kind of working. You could do it with water too instead of glazing liquid, like I've done this with water. So I'm just kind of blending that in. And using that glazing liquid out here with that kind of clean brush, you can kind of get along those edges. Now, see what it's doing right here? It's kind of lifting. So that means that that glazing liquid is already drying. So I don't really want to go over and over this too much. I want to kind of move on 
to another spot. And even if it's not completely blended, we can go always go back in and blend it in later. So if you don't feel like you did a good job with the blending or you don't really like it at first, don't keep blending in the same area over and over again because it will just start lifting off your color. So here again, I've laid down my color and then I'm going to... Another way um, that I do it is I lay down the color with this brush and then I clean this brush off really quick and, and then wipe it with this brush. But... Um, or, you know, some people use mop brush for this, like they use a really soft mop brush and do this kind of blendy thing with the mop brush. Oh, my brush, my paint bro. palette keeps, I know it does, it's flying down on me today. Not sure why. Okay, so I'm just doing a little bit darker and I'm trying to kind of get little, uh, sort of random, almost like leaf type shapes maybe. I'm not really, um going for any particular look, I'm going to grab some yellow. And I think that that's another way we can do this too. We can use some of that background yellow color and just kind of soften up that green and go over the edges of it, blend it in a little bit instead of using just that glazing liquid. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this look, but we're just kind of going for sort of a soft blend in of colors in this corner and I think I'm going to grab a little bit more of this yellow pick up a little bit of that there and add a little bit of it right in here and then grab some more of my lighter yellow that's up in here and blend it in Some double stick tape or something today. It's just moving around. Huh? I know it doesn't usually do that to me. It's weird. Getting some white here. Just kind of feel like it was getting a little bit dark. So just adding a little bit of white in. And I can add a little bit of my glazing liquid if it's getting kind of sticky and feeling like it's not flowing really well for me. I don't want to add water because what water will do is lift off my color. It'll dilute the paint and lift it off. The glazing liquid or like a matte medium or something like that will add fluidity to your paint that water, just like, you know, adding water would, but um, it doesn't actually dilute the paint color really. Um, well, it does dilute the paint color a little bit, but it doesn't um, cause the paint to lift off the canvas is what I'm meant, meant to say. All right, so I think that's pretty good. It's kind of got this little uh, flowy thing going on here. Um, that's pretty much what I was looking for. So I think I'm going to stop there. Pretty happy. And at this point, you could uh, dry this again, which probably would be a good idea. But I think I've got enough area up in here that's still dry that I can probably work up in here while this is drying and get away with not uh, drying it out. So we'll try it. So we got a good question. I haven't seen okay. this question before. Okay. Which is, do, do you get extra points for good questions? Yes. Okay. Yes, they get Just half. Wondered. They get half off the cost of the video. <laughs> so that's a good deal. Yeah. All right. But uh, go internet provider isn't included. Anyways, um, <laughs> they wanted to know: Is there a difference in between a like standard wrapped canvas and a canvas board? As far as paint lifting, is is it more likely to lift off one or the other, or is it about um, the same? Yeah, that is a good question. I, uh, um, I, I, I would say that boards tend to be a little bit more uh, prone to lifting, and I don't really know why. I think maybe because there's not uh, that penetration through, like it's kind of got you know the paint stops at the board, and it doesn't have that. Uh, um, maybe as much catch to it. I'm not really sure exactly why, but I have noticed that um, not these boards in particular, but like especially when I work on gesso boards that are like really super smooth, they really lift um, very easily. So much more easily than a, than a canvas would. So yeah, that is, that's a good question. I haven't found that the linen boards are that prone to it, but I think that they probably are more prone to it than a like a duck canvas or something that... That is like a really thick cotton, you know, for sure. Those are not going to lift as easily. All right. Um, okay, so I've got my white here, but I do want to mix a little bit of gray because we're 
I'm going to work with some gray in our daisies in these back flowers. So I'm going to go with like maybe three parts blue to two parts brown. Um, so we've got a gray that's a little bit on the blue side. Um, if you went 50-50, it'd be like almost a neutral gray. Uh, but if you go a little bit heavier on the blue, then you get more of a blue gray. So we're going to go a little bit more on the blue side. And then the opposite is true. If you go a little bit more on the brown, you get a little bit more of a brownish gray, which that's one of my favorite grays um, to use is this ultramarine blue and brown burnt umber. It's just got a really pretty tone and it just works for most <clears throat> most paintings. It looks really great as a white um, with whites. It makes really beautiful grays for um, these white flowers. I used it a lot in some of our other flower paintings. So... All right, so I'm gonna make a really soft gray here. I, I made a dark gray to start with, and then I just added a bunch of the white here, and I'm using the um, 3 8 inch Willows Blender here. I'm gonna wipe off most of that paint so I don't have a lot on my brush. And I'm gonna just kinda of pick out my daisies, and they're gonna kinda of go across my canvas here. Um, so there's several different ones that are very, very blurry in the background, and there's only like, or five that are kind of in focus in the foreground so I'm not going to try to draw them because um, I'll just try to I'll lift off my um, paint but I'm going to use a little glazing liquid I'm going to grab a little bit more of the white it's a little bit too obvious I want a color that's really close to this yellow in fact I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this and what that'll do is make it more likely to um, blend out into that background see so if I add that yellow that's really close to that background color then when I do this in here I can do these these really soft flowers back here and they're going to almost disappear. And I'm just going to grab some more of that yellow. And up here toward the top, I'm going to add a little bit more of that yellow. And I'm just kind of doing um, sort of the... Huh? Is it really, really light? Cool. We'll zoom in if you need to. But I'm going to add a I'm little bit of white. for that. <laughs> yeah, zoom in. Zoom in. Go off camera, sure. Stay on camera. Okay, I think this got a little bit white here, and there's one big one that's right in here. And right now, I'm just kind of laying in some of the. I'm not even worried about the the flowers really actually having much form. I'm actually the they're so blurry that they're not really crisp edges. So you don't want that. You want you want them to be really kind of blurry so it's actually kind of almost better if they look sort of like blobs at this point um, we're just kind of laying in a little bit of the color sort of where it generally is going to be going and then we will define them a little bit better but we're really going to keep these fairly neutral and fairly like out of focus so not going to have a lot of detail to these and that's what's going to give us that blurry look that we're going for the for these soft background ones so we're going to stay pretty close to the same value as our background. And we're going to, and by value, I just mean the dot, light and dark. And we're going to just slowly add our colors on there. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this white. I don't know why it's not turning out white. It's looking like a weird color there. All right, so just doing a few little bits. Let's do a little bit more. I think it's I think this background is not completely dry so it's like lifting it's the picking up the color that's in our background paint hey can you quickly show the glazing liquid that you're using yes but like really fast like zip it across the screen <laughs> it's the golden acrylic glazing liquid satin finish yeah She has the bottle turned towards me so I can see it from here, so. He knows of what he speaks. That's what it looks like. 
it doesn't come with the paint splotches all oh, over. Oh, it does. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty artistically arranged, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll sell it that. It should. Bidding starting it at get the blue down here. It's like all the colors are all kind of spaced out there. Yeah, it's I'm, nice. I'm going to sell that. Bidding starts at a hundred. <laughs> It's uh, so. it's still about half full, so you know. Hey, <laughs> just saying. You're crazy. I know. <laughs> about you. <laughs> Where's your? Man, I need all kinds of right stuff now. over here. I need a ding ding bell and a, ding ding ding. And a da -da -da -da. Yeah, you do. Trying to get this Daisy over here is not cooperating with me back here. I just keep adding colors to it, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Okay. Let's just let it dry because it's not it's not cooperating. I think I just have too much gray in this brush since I mixed that gray in. It's got so much in there that it's coming out even when I don't want it to. Let's mix up a little bit more of this light yellow too for using it. In our background we had a little bit of the unbleached titanium and then it was a lot of titanium white. yellow so we have it for mixing and blending our flowers It'll make it easier to keep them blurry there we go I want the top of that flower to disappear back there and then I want a few like little spots where there's just kind of a bright yellow or bright white um, little spot. I'm gonna wipe my brush off, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna brush through that. What are you laughing about? I need my own band, apparently, back here, so we can you be do. playing. Kind of like the Tonight Show or something, mm -hmm. you know. Give you accompaniment and. Yeah, what's the guy's name right now? Is this that does the Tonight Show? <clears throat> Are you gonna try to get me some more hate mail? Is that what you're no, going for? No, 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 no. I'm serious. What's his name? Jimmy Fallon. No, not Jimmy Fallon. The the Jimmy band, Kimmel. The the band guy, for Fallon. For Fallon, uh, the Roots. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we, we can get them get to the back roots. me up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the yeah, I got hate mail about Jimmy Kimmel, so I can't say him anymore. <laughs> Literally, I'm oh. not kidding either. Like, somebody was really upset that I mentioned him. And I, I'm really not even exactly sure why, but... I don't follow. I don't even remember the last time I mentioned him. We don't watch him or anything. It's just funny to me that I got hate mail about something that I don't even remember saying. So <laughs> 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 it happens. Yep. And I'm having it framed. Yeah. Mark's really excited about it. He's really proud of it. Oh, the joys of YouTube life. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Fortunately, so, the grabbing some yellow oxide here with my titanium white. What? Fortunately, the amazing, incredible people. Oh, yeah. Far away. Oh, for sure. The haters. For sure. And that's why we can laugh about it and still <laughs> enjoy what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll shrug it off because there's, it's just, we know it's not, fortunately, not the majority. 
We've got some awesome, awesome people that we've gotten to know through YouTube. It's been really amazing. All right, so there's one up here. I want to, there's going to be one big one, like right in here. So I'm just going to kind of place where that center is going to go so I kind of know where the other one is. And then this one, I'm keeping it really soft, and I'm just barely kind of dusting a little color there for some of these centers of these flowers that are really back here. And then this is going to make it look a little bit more like flowers, and it's going to start making a little bit more sense. Like, okay, yeah, I see what we're doing now. We've just been putting some kind of like random yellow blobs here and there. But now we can kind of make it make a little bit more sense. And we're definitely going to work on that one because I'm still not happy with the whole shape of it. But we'll get it there. It's, it's a work in progress. The background is so light that the camera is focusing on your hand every time you go. Really? Across, so it goes blurry and it comes back. Oh, so man. Sorry, guys. Can you paint without your hand? Uh, here, I'll try to keep my hand off camera. Yeah. yeah just don't just use do your hand. Just do the hands. brush. <laughs> Come on, no hands. Okay, so I'm just going to go in here and laying in some spots here where I'm seeing a little bit of yellow in the background. Keeping it very random. I've got a big old hair there, sorry. And let's clean that out. And the background's mostly dry. Grab some of my gray and grab a little bit more blue. I, just, I didn't make this quite blue enough, I think. So, just making my... Gray a little bit more blue. We'll do some blue back in here. And if it's too bright, add white. And I'm really literally just kind of dusting it back and forth here. Not worried about them being looking like any particular shape. These ones, uh, the less distinct the better. So just kind of try to keep the edges sort of blendy and... soft and keep them close to the same value as your background should be fairly close yeah it's washing it out now it's like really washing it out yeah the exposure on the camera is overcompensating for mm. how light it is you need to put something on the canvas that it can see that it can see <laughs> i don't know i don't know what that's going to help here i'll go Maybe put when my, i put I'll, my I'll stems in put my foot up there no, don't. Or just put your hand on there. It should. I'm trying to. Yeah, just keep your hand there. It might stay focused. Well, if it is washed like for I can sure. See it? It's like glowing on oh my view. Oh well, sorry guys. Hopefully, it's close enough that you can tell what's going on here. So the Willows Blender is. Part of which series brushes of theirs? And these are the print, the uh, velvet touch. Velvet touch. Yeah, velvet yeah. touch. And you have the fine. eighth inch, quarter inch, and three eighths inch. Yes. On that list. Yes. And these daisies are hanging down, like downward. So I'm going underneath all of these daisy. Heads here and adding and getting a little bit of white here, adding a little bit of white. Not a lot. I added 
some of that yellow from the background here. So if you're watching this live, somebody comments just said that the brush guys are having a sale. Ooh, what? So I don't know if the really? sale works in conjunction with the 5% off using code. I think it does. Code, I think so. that, yeah, I think it does. Hey, come on now. Mm -hmm. Mother's Day is coming up. Seriously, folks. Ooh. Send that link to your husband's yeah. children, significant others. <laughs> yeah. Say, this is what I want for Mother's That's Day. Smart idea. Even you guys out there. <laughs> just get in on it. <laughs> you you want something for Mother's Day, honey? That's what I've you're trying to say? I've never got anything for Mother's Day. I'm sorry. <laughs> never even thought to get you anything. But I never got you anything for Father's Day either, so. True. We're even. Dad. Oh, by the way, I haven't got you anything yet either for this Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so, low expectations. Check. Check. Lowering my expectations right now. Set the bar low. You, you know how to work it. Come in with the chicken McNugget Happy Meal. Yep. Score. I'm going to take some of this green and I'm just going to do some random kind of almost like bladed shapes here. I needed some more of this yellow so that it's not quite so dark. So now that I've got all my kind of basic shapes in here, I'm going to come through here and add some kind of Stems. And if this brush is too thick, you can get the smaller one. But there are some like stems here. So I'm just going to very lightly brush in. And this may be a little too thick. I don't know. Try to keep it thin. I might switch to my quarter inch one. So I keep this, these flower stems thin and Add lots of yellow, so they're very blurry, and I want to brush out those edges, so they're really soft. So all of these ones that are out here are going to have a little bit of a stem. Super bright. Let's get some of that yellow. Tone them down. There we go. Just wiping off the extra there. There we go. You could add, you could use use your um, angle brush for this too. Um, like we could do these stems with our angle brush through this. I feel like these are just getting a little bit too like perfect, you know. I don't want them to be super defined. Blurring them out a little bit. All of this stuff in the background, I want to keep it really soft and kind of floaty looking. It's 
some of them we can be a little bit more deliberate about. The ones, as they get closer to us, they're getting a little bit more defined. So there's some, like there's one up in here that's pretty well defined. Right out this way. It kind of comes across all of these. So it kind of comes like that. Using this angle brush will kind of help. You can add a little bit of the glazing liquid to it to make your paint go a little bit smoother. But I just like using that angle brush because you can add a lot of paint to it. And it really can make a nice fine line for you. Okay, and then there's one right up here. It goes across like that. And I think I wanted to do a little bit more with some of these background ones before I do anything else. I want to add another layer of white in here. Where's my... Get more water on that so it doesn't dry out. I lost my... There it is. Smaller Willow's Blender. Hiding. And when it's been dunked in that water for so long, you want to get your water and just kind of get the, the water get trapped up in here and come out while you're painting. So I just kind of wipe it off with my towel so that it doesn't come off when I'm not expecting it. Right, so let's grab a little bit of yellow oxide and some of the cadmium yellow medium. I'm going to go a little bit darker right in here. Just a little. A little glazing liquid. Blend out those edges. Wipe my brush down. Continue to work that in. Just scrubbing that in. You may not have to do this. I just noticed mine still wanted a little bit brighter right there. Get some yellow or some green and some yellow oxide. It'll make kind of a more of a neutral green. Let's add that yellow from our background to it. Soften it up. Yeah, we'll use a little bit of that in here as well. Glazing liquid. And we're just going to add, keep adding layers upon layers until we get the colors the way we want it to be. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to dampen this just a little bit use this to scrub this in. This will scrub off some of that paint and also kind of scrub it in. This is that Deerfoot stippler. You could use really any kind of stiff bristle brush you've got that works. Yeah, this is good. So we're just kind of pushing that paint around where you want it to go. And this is really kind of almost glazing. We've got a lot of the glazing liquid in here. So it's not, it's not going on super thick. Let's add a little bit of blue. Let's do like a little teal blue area. Got some of that yellow. Let's do some teal blue down here. Glazing liquid. And just make sure your background's dry or this will lift off your layers. You don't want that to happen. So just let your background dry. If you see like right here, if I keep blending right here, See what happens? It's lifting off that color. So I'm going to add a little bit of fresh paint to the sides. And then I'm not going to mess with that area where it's lifting off. I'm just going to kind of go around it as close to it as I can, but not mess with it. 
and then we'll come back to it later if we need to blend it in and it'll blend in later so it's not a big deal it happens with acrylics pretty easily these paints are starting to get sticky because they're starting to dry down here I may have to have you just dry these hun dry this canvas because it's I've got areas here that are lifting when I'm trying to mess with them there's so many layers with this but so why not I bring the dryer back with me oh really you want me to dry again <laughs> okay sorry well yeah it's this uh it's a rough life I have. Mm -hmm. The union is going to hear about this. Okay, so give me a second here. I'm just trying to kind of blend, blend in some white here. Okay, so what she isn't telling you is how lightly she's actually touching the canvas right now. Yeah. It's just barely wisping across it. Yes. You need me right here the whole time. Thank you. Looking over your shoulder. Looking over my shoulder and talking Awkwardly. and whispering. <laughs> I did not know that I needed you over here on my shoulder. It is pretty awkward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just adding a little bit of white hair. Just trying to kind of blend out these areas. Feeling like up in here, I could use a little bit of white. There's kind of an area of like daisies that it's in our background here that are all back in here kind of blendy it's definitely like it's still you can't really see what's happening on the canvas with it, these colors because of the camera sorry we'll have to remember that next time when we're doing like a really bright yellow like this doesn't like it does not like to pick up those colors. Okay, so I'm just kind of softening up the edges of everything here. And I think that's pretty good for our blendy background. So I'm going to have Mark dry this completely for our next layer so that I don't have to fight this background lifting off on me at all. So if you're looking for a traceable, um, there's there's debate. I, I don't know. I hear debates sometimes. I hear comments like that traceables are not, um, you know, not real art or whatever. But artists have used tools over the years um, to help them. So I feel like any tool that helps you get to um, enjoy painting is great. You know, by all means, work on your drawing skills. I think that your drawing skills will help you with your painting for sure. And it'll help you because it changes the way you see. But, um, you know, I don't feel like that using a traceable is in, in any way cheating. Um, you're just kind of beating up the steps and making sure that, uh, you know, you're, you're beginning. Um, you've got a pattern you know, so that it just makes it a lot easier to place everything and get your perspectives right and everything. So um, if you want to uh, get a traceable for this or any of my other lessons, I've got over 300 videos on YouTube and I have traceables for about 270 of them, I think. Um, and most of them are now on my website. So I've got a new website out called thankfulart.com. And um, you can get, I'm sorry, I'm just washing my hands while I'm talking here. Um, you can get, um, if you go to that website and go to the traceables section, um, you can click on any of the traceables and it'll take you straight to the Patreon page where the traceable is posted. And um, if you're not a patron or you're not logged into your Patreon account, it'll ask you to log in or to sign up. So, um, and then you can download it from there. But, um, and then print it out to whatever size canvas you want. And if you want to upgrade your um, 
your uh, traceable to a larger canvas. So say you're using something bigger than, you know, usually like nine by 12, you can get away with printing it out on your regular eight by 11 and a half inch because it's um, close enough um, or eight and a half by 11. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but um, what size of regular paper is, but it's close enough to the nine by 12 that you're not going to lose much on your margins if you print it out like with uh, no margins on it or if it cuts off part of the image on the sides. Um, then usually you can use that uh, as your traceable on like a nine by 12 or something like that. Anything smaller than a nine by 12 um, is pretty easy to do. It's a little tacky still. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you use like cool, cool air to to think so, sorry guys I'm sorry that we're not having anything for you to look at tonight but um, anyhow so uh, what I was saying was on the traceables um, you can use a there's a website called rasterbater.net it's a weird name but um, it and it's .net not .org um, and it uh, will allow you to upgrade your or upsize your canvas uh, your printables to any size canvas that you're using so let's say good tool but then we're going to have our bonus video i actually originally had it scheduled for mother's day <laughs> i didn't realize mother's day was um the second weekend in may we um i'll usually do the bonus video it's not a public video it's for our um, patreon folks and we usually pick a project that's going to take um quite a while so uh the project that we're doing this month is like a um landscape with some trees and it's got reflection in the water. And so that will be our bonus video for our $5 and up patrons. So if you are um, interested in that, you can go to my patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art and check that out. It's also got links on my website. So if you go to the Thankful Art website, the links to Patreon and all my other stuff that we're doing are on there as well. So, all right. So Mark is blow drying. I don't know what else to show you, talk about. So I went to a concert last night. <laughs> went to see the Killers. It was really good. They were awesome. Uh, very entertaining. Up way too late. But uh, very good. Thank you. I went with my son Nathan and his girlfriend Maggie and my friend Margaret. So shout out to Margaret. Margaret is actually responsible for me doing these videos twice a week. Because I was when I was first in doing YouTube, I was really having a struggle with... Um, uh, well, I don't know if it was confidence, but more like just, um, feeling that perfectionism, you know, like wanting to have everything planned out and exactly, um, what I was going to be doing. And especially with these live shows, you know, having everything like perfectly planned out beforehand so that, um, we didn't have, uh, I don't know, you know, I just like to have things, I'm a planner, and uh, it was really stressing me out, and she really encouraged me that, um, just to kind of trust, trust the, um, I don't know, she, Margaret's just a very wise woman, she just kind of encouraged me to, to go for it, you know, to just get in there and uh, do it, and that, um, it didn't have to be perfect, you know, that I can, I can kind of, uh, hopefully, even if I make a mistake, I can work through it and show you how to fix things. And that can be part of the process. And that's really what we found has been really fun about doing these videos in this live format is that uh, when I do, you know, have problems or, you know, make a mistake or whatever happens, and it will happen because it's painting and it's live and I'm not doing examples because of my tendonitis issues so I can't paint the examples like I was before because um, that would have been like five paintings a week it just was too much I couldn't do it um, <coughs> um, anyhow it just it's fun and I so she's kind of responsible for us getting to this point um to where I can kind of do these and just be a little bit more relaxed about it and just kind of take a deep breath, you know, work through any problems and, uh, you know, what's the worst can happen is paint, right? <laughs> so, anyhow, 
She's like my uh, life coach encourager. <laughs> and she likes music, too, so it's nice because we can get to go out and do something. Mark doesn't have to go to these concerts with me that he doesn't really care about. So it's a win-win for yes, everybody involved. I'm a, I'm a backup. <laughs> yeah, Mark's the backup concert person <laughs> when Margaret's not available. That's working, too, there. I just kind of dabbed off that stem there. So I mixed up my um, two yellows and my cadmium, well, no, maybe just the cadmium yellow, uh, yellow green, and the two browns, the burnt sienna and burnt umber here for this green that's kind of a neutral green. This will be our stem color for our stems. So I added a little bit of it back in here because I kind of erased these stems that were way back here. So uh, just adding a little bit back in here. I'm trying to put them back in just a little bit. There we go. Keep them small because they're not very big. That's my phone, sorry. Mm -hmm. Turn that off. Is it my phone? It's not mine. Ooh, I got a color on there. All right, so we've just been talking about all kinds of stuff while you've been painting, you've been doing your, your drawing stuff, honey. Drawing stuff. I know, we've been just talking about art stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Blah, talking about my concert a little bit. <coughs> Something about going to live music is really something. Especially when there's a bunch of people that are just talking. I I track the crazies. I'll I'll admit it. I do. There if there's if there's somebody that's drinking too much and talking too loud, they're gonna stand right in front of me or right behind me. Every time. There was yeah, one so, right in front of us last night. So if somebody in chat can explain the reasoning behind paying, you know, Twenty, thirty, a hundred dollars for a ticket <laughs> to go into a concert and then sit there and talk yeah, and not yeah. actually listen to the music. No. Please, no, please let us listen. know what that reasoning is because <laughs> I usually try to talk for free. You know, I find, try not to pay for that. But they're just there for the experience of like being out and saying that they did it, but not actually actually caring oh, about okay. the All music right. itself, like some of us do. I mean, granted, we we just talk and chat through your whole video here painting. We don't pay attention. True, but, true. But that's not the same thing. That's not like apples to pineapples. <laughs> it does annoy me. It, this is one of my pet peeves. But it fortunately, the music was loud enough that you couldn't hear her. I, you know, she, she's... All right, so going in here with some white. Here, we're getting off topic. Sorry, guys. They don't care. That's a whole nother subject. And back to painting. Back to painting, yes. I was just trying to talk about something to fill the time. Talked about tracing philosophies and resources. So I'm adding a little bit brighter white, but you can see where we have that darker like gray back there and so now when I put this lighter this brighter white on top of it it's still kind of blurry I've switched to my number four filbert just so I can get a little bit more control on these brush strokes but I'm going to go back in here to some of these areas where I put this super blurry um like darker white and I'm going to add this brighter white in here and kind of point it towards this yellow that we've you know put in for the stems or the for the uh top part of the flower there and just add so now yours is doing it <clears throat> it was your phone all along no, you blamed is, mine this is the, that is the <laughs> first message I got <laughs> okay all right. and it's a beautiful picture oh is it yes of Liam no oh 
of a oscilloscope screen grab from work. Yeah, look, maybe you should paint something like really this don't someday want to see it. Uh, what nice? Exactly. Do I need to show that on camera. Well, I mean, maybe you could paint it someday. No. I'm no. Pretty, pretty okay. Sure, that's never going to happen. Sure, don't paint the stuff I'm interested in. I can pretty much guarantee that that will not be painted by me. Ever. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Going in here with this ultramarine blue. I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that gray. And we're going to... Put in some more. It's a little bit dark. Yeah, I keep thinking that this background is so light that it just go in there with a the gray that I think seems light over here. And then when I get it on my canvas, it's super, it's even lighter. It's hard to tell. So we're just going to put in a few little kind of random brush strokes here for our background daisies. There's a whole kind of cluster right in here. And then there's a big one that's going to be right here. So let's go ahead and draw in where our large flowers are going to go. That'll give us um, more of an idea of where we're going to put these. So this one's going to go right in here. And if you could kind of do a diagonal line like this, across. So this one's going to be right up in here. It's going to have a large center. Ah, that helped, I think. And then the petals are going to come down like this. Then there's going to be another one right here. So we kind of started this one, right? It's right here. And the petals are coming down right here and here, this way. And the stem is going to come up there. Then, so we need another stem that comes this way across. Or actually a little bit more like this, across this way. And then there is another one right in here that's low. And this one's really in focus. So it's kind of right in between. There's a big one right here. So let's go ahead and put this one in. So this large one here, then right in here, there's a large one right here. That kind of spans this whole area. And this one up here is right up in here. Let me see. I want to get it far enough away from this that it's not going to overlap. So it's going to be right in here. Like that. And keep it low. And then this one where the ladybug is going to be is going to be right below that. Kind of in line with this one. So if you did kind of a straight line right here, it's going to be right in here. Right about in here. And these petals are going to come out and down. And this stem is going to come like that. Okay. So one, two, three, four, and then five right here. Six. This one down here is really big. Right here. It's going to fill in this area here. And then this one is going to overlap it and fill in the space between these two. So it's like right in here. It's large. It's a large one. It's very in focus. All right. So that gives me an idea of where these are going to go. Now I can kind of work my other background ones around them and start putting in the background petals for these. So these are going to come this way. And this stem is right here. This one's going to come around here. Okay. I think that helped bring the thing back into focus a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's not as glowy. Oh, yes. It's not Much as better. psychedelic. Yeah. Just, just leave it like that. <laughs> just leave it like that. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Talked about all kinds of stuff. Okay. So I've got my white here.
So for the blood ales. Some bright, brighter white right here in front of you of these. What? I was just going to say for the millennials out there, they used to use chalk in school to write on boards. <laughs> I know I've used that they one before. They did this but before smart boards. Yep, yeah, before white boards and, and dry erase boards and stuff like that. Yep. They actually used chalk. They did. I used to ask to clean the chalk. I liked to clean the chalkboards. I was weird that way. And they wonder why we have lung issues. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with all that chalk dust? Yeah. Okay. So, just added some more of that background yellow there to... And I'm just going to put in some random daisies here and there. Like random petals that are kind of back in here. Random kind of blurry white spots. And I'm just setting my brush down and kind of barely skimming it there. So let's kind of go over some of these gray things now. So we've got them down there so we can have something to kind of play against. Now when we put this color over the top, it kind of blends it out a little bit. So you're... A little bit of white <coughs> in here. A little bit of the gray. What? So my what? Uh, the link down below your video to your mm -hmm. website is to your new website. Uh, thankfulart.com is my new website. My old website is still Angela Fine Art, Angela okay. Anderson Fine Art. So the link is it is not down there. Yes, it is. Oh, maybe it's not. No, I haven't added it. I needed to. Yeah, I need to add it. I meant mm -hmm. to add it to my. <sighs> I've been too busy gallivanting off. Going and, to concerts. Know. Yeah. So, so what is your new web address? It's thankfulart.com. Thankfulart.com. Mm -hmm. I go, will add it to the description down there. Go check it out. If you're a Patreon member, go yeah. there. And she has... That's the way to get your traceables now. Yeah, she's working on all the traceables. There's hyperlinks to each one that takes you to Patreon. I have about 60 order. left to add links to. I've gotten most. I mean, I've literally gone through every single traceable. It's taken me a long, long time. So y'all better... No. <laughs> <laughs> better not get one more email asking how to find a traceable. That's all I'm asking, please. Well, we just got a comment. For the love of all that's holy. <laughs> We've heard you. It's taken us a long time. <laughs> it wasn't because we don't like you and we're trying to make your lives miserable. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I, I feel your pain. I do. I, I, I spent so much time answering how to find traceables in the last two years since we've been on Patreon. So hopefully this will solve that. So you, all you have to do now is to go to the website. And they're all there. And they're all visual. So if you're, you know, if you just don't even need to know the name of it. If you know what the painting looks like, you can go and find that traceable for it there. And go straight to where it's saved on Patreon. So it should, should be good. And it will, f it's a lot of work for me, but then once it's done, it's going to be done. And I won't hopefully have to answer a dozen emails a week about traceables anymore. <laughs> I'm not k kidding. It was that bad. It was so bad. <laughs> Just, yeah. I'm like, oh it, my gosh. Yeah, is, if we could have done something. Sooner I, com and, and I complained every time, yeah. I, every chance I got about it, I did. I promise you. But so yeah, I, think, I, I think honestly, I think they're start. They're gonna. I think probably have to go through and do this all this work. I think they're adding galleries to Patreon now, so it'll probably be way better, and you won't need it anymore. But it'll still be there. So mm -hmm. all right. So adding these kind of light gray petals and then I'm going back over this way with the white so I add the gray underneath going up towards the middle so I'm going to do this one you can see me do it slow because I won't be talking about Patreon anymore 
So kind of setting my brush down and this rounded brush makes it really easy to do this. So it's already rounded. So you already get that like daisy shaped tip, right? And I'm just kind of setting it down and kind of curving it in towards the center and sort of lifting it before it gets all the way to the center. Then I'm going to pick up some white. I'm using that fluid white and I'm going to come the opposite direction. And I'm going to go over the top of that gray, but leave a little bit on the tips. And some of them I can go over the top, you know, totally, but the gray kind of just helps it, gives a little bit more structure, a little bit more uh, depth to your flower. And uh, we're keeping these fairly simple. These are not, you know, like photorealistic. Uh, we're just kind of trying to give you something that, you know, gets close to the photo, but doesn't, uh, doesn't have to be super difficult to get this effect. So let's go here. We're going to do some of this gray back in here. And I might even add a little bit of, I feel like these ones back here are almost kind of green. Add a little bit of that teal color to my gray blue. Yeah. So there. Then I'm going to wet that gray out, get some white, and come down from the top. And add my white petals. Let me use this green before it dries. Add a little bit of white to it to soften it up. And I'm going to come over the top and go right off the canvas with this. It gets lighter as it goes toward the bottom, so I picked up a little bit of white. There, let's do this one. We're zoomed in, honey. Yes, we are. I'm doing stems. Oh. Okay. Well, somebody had asked a question on your website. Mm -hmm. You click the link for the traceable. It takes them to Patreon. Yes. Uh, for the reference photos for the five dollar supporters and above. Yes. So we just... I don't have links for those yet. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. But what you can do is you can use the one for the traceable and click on the the word, whatever word it is. So if it's like dolphin or something, whatever. Um, if you click on that, it will open up the other post with that same t tag. So it shortens it a little bit. It, it's a little bit shorter, easier. For those too so because um, you've already got the same um, same tag so right underneath the post there's uh, it'll have the description and then at the very bottom it has these little words and it'll say traceable uh, painting um, like for this one it'd say daisy ladybug um, flowers that kind of thing. And so if you click on that, it will open up all the other paintings that have that same, those same tags. So it shortens the search, you know, significantly. Um, and then you'll know it's the exact same tag because you're already at the traceable for that same painting. So it'll, it'll link it to that. I probably ought to go in and, um, if I added the link to the traceable um, description, it probably would help, but that's a whole nother, it's, you know, I mean, we're talking 600, <laughs> we're talking 200 plus. Right, but the traceables are available post. to the dollar level and above, right. and the photos are at the $5 level and above, so right. you'll need to have them segregated. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, but I still could put the I could still put the link to the. Uh, well, no, they they wouldn't be able to see the the description. Well, no, yeah, if you were their five dollar level, if you opened up the traceable, then you would be able to see the the post for the the dis. Okay. You back, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back to painting. <sighs> I'm not speaking well today. I'm trying to do these stems in there. This is really not the right brush for these stems. Should be using my angle brush, but being lazy. It's working. It's just not the most ideal brush for it. All right. Uh, let's put this one right in here. And I'm going to just connect it to what we've already got going on right there. That's something that I need to hire an assistant to do. Because it's literally been hours every night. Dragging and dropping and copying and pasting. Tra the traceable links <laughs> <laughs> to their respective photos. <laughs> it's so tedious. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put something down in here. Okay. Oh, and then there's one here. I think it's really dark right up where underneath the, the daisy, so I'm going to darken up right there where it's right up underneath the daisy. dark right there. Maybe even get a little bit of burnt sienna. Put that in there. Okay. How long have we been? Just over an hour. Okay. Adding water to that brown just to kind of soften it up and just put this one over the top of this. I, it was supposed to be underneath, but we'll put it under over the top of this stem. So this one right here. A little bit of blue. And it's going right in here. This one's almost kind of at, it looks like it's almost dying. It's kind of a little bit more shriveled up. You can open it up a little bit if you don't want it so so small looking or so kind of droopy, I should say, the petals. I'm going to use yellow oxide hair and a little bit of cadmium red light and dab in the bottom of my daisies here. just underneath where these centers are going to be. Mostly right where the petals are going to be touching down. Not really worried about the top part because that's going to be a lot lighter. But right in here we want a little bit of darkness. When you were painting the stems, mm -hmm. was the paint kind of flu uh, fluidy, yeah. liquidy? Yeah, it helps if it's more fluid, for sure. I have more water in my 
brush than normal. Get a little bit of yellow here. So now you can see where that all this blendy stuff, once we put these daisies on top that are much more in focus, it's like all of a sudden those get pushed back to the back and you can kind of see the effect that we were going for. That's a lot, a lot more obvious. All right, so we don't have this one in yet. And this one. We still need to do the ladybug too. Got to get to work. We're just talking. Talking, talking, talking. Well, this one's just, it just takes time. It's layered, you know. It's going to take a little time to get it there, but it's, we'll get it there. So I'm going to brighten up just a few of these that are back here in the background. Yeah, use that yellow. A little bit of white. Soften it up so it's not super bright. There we go. Make sure these background ones have their little centers. This will help also so you can kind of connect any of these petals that are out here floating and not looking like they're connected to anything. Make sure you add white or keep it, you know, soft and blendy though. Don't do it too dark like we're doing these front foreground ones. We don't want to pull these forward. If you do them too dark, they'll get pulled into the foreground and then it'll ruin that blendy, blended effect that we're going for. So just keeping them soft by kind of tapping the edges out. some of that fluid white here and I'm gonna have a couple petals out here over the top of my petals that we've already done white now in here second layer of petals same thing with this some of these are really bright white you don't have to do them all in one stroke this is kind of a little bit like I'm sort of patching them together multiple brush strokes this one in the back is very yellowish. So I'm going to add some of that background yellow to my white. I'm going to keep it a little bit brighter than the background, obviously, but it's going to be closer to the background color. And I can do a little bit of the, let's do a little bit of the burnt sienna with my 
yellow for the underside of these. They're a little bit more reddish than the blue that's over in these ones. Blue gray. These ones are kind of more golden under the minutes. With that white. There's a little bit of gray over here though. See a little bit of gray. still doing that glow thing every now and then. I don't know if it's not, it's just not gonna stop doing that, I think. Every time I take my arm away, it does okay if there's a shadow on it, but when I take my arm away, it just starts, like this whole upper part just disappears. Okay, so let's do our ladybug. Well, actually, let's finish this petal right here. So this one, I'm going to do some brighter whites. And we can go from the petal down if we need to. Making sure that I've got like little rounded bumps right here with it where it's meeting the center of the flower so there's not like a solid line there. I want there to be kind of like these little lumpy, lumpy petals. Grabbing that blue. How are you doing, hon? I'm staying awake. Staying awake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I know it's an hour and a half already, so it's it okay. Long, it's a long one for Tuesday night. I'll try to go faster here. Okay, so we're almost done. We're at the very last one there. And then we just gotta add a little bit of this center. I'm gonna bring this stem up a little bit higher. There. And we gotta add her daisy petals. So there's one that comes out. I'm just using the edge of my brush to do that one. And then
coat on these. Let's put a little stem on this guy. There's no stem here, so let's go ahead and put a stem in there. <coughs> I'm just gonna use water and kind of dilute that out so it's super soft. And then let's use our different stip or our little stippler here. I'm gonna use a quarter inch and my cadmium yellow medium. And I'm going to tap in the centers of all these flowers right over the top, leave a little bit of texture. So don't cover all that dark color up, but go right up to the top. So this one's kind of a cone shape here. So I'm going to tap, 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 start at the top, work my way down. And as I go down to the bottom here, I'm going to tap a little bit lighter and leave a little bit more space. It's a little bit of practice to get this technique, but it's pretty fun and it's this brush makes it really easy to do, these these stippler brushes. Okay, I've got the lighter yellow now. This is the cadmium yellow light. Just adding a little highlight here with that color. <coughs> Going back over this one with the cadmium yellow light. Sound guy. I do. I'm sorry. Okay. Because then I laugh and blow it out out of proportion. And blow your eardrums out. Okay, somebody's asked if a stippler is the same as a Willow's blender. Yeah, this is the Willow's blender. Yeah. They're all considered like a stippler type brush where the, you you're they're used to do stippling foliage. They're not a solid, you know, you're not painting a solid line with them. They're textured kind of bristles, so they're made to, for this kind of stippled look. Light can be a light now on the top here. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of green, a little bit of this green that's in my stem. I'm going to do it right here, just a little bit. Tiny, 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 tiny bit right there. And I could have done this before I started the other colors too, but I just noticed it. So I put a little bit of green right there. And grab that darker under color because I kind of covered most of it on this one. A little bit more of that and grab my cadmium yellow medium and tap over the top. Blend it in. Turned out pretty good. I like it. Not too bad. What? I like how you're judging it. <laughs> That's not too bad. Yeah. I'm my own worst critic. <laughs> Getting that cadmium yellow light. And if you don't have cadmium yellow light, just use white with your cadmium yellow medium. It's not going to be the same exact color, but it'll at least get you a little bit lighter version. The cadmium yellow light is lighter, but it's also brighter. It's like a neon yellow almost, you know, it's super bright. So it's going to be different than 
adding white to your cadmium yellow, it actually kind of dulls it a little bit when you add white to um, cadmium yellow. Let me add more water to that so it don't dry out. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my towel here. And I'm going to lightly, now that my background's dry, I should be able to do this without pulling off my paint. Wipe off my chalk lines. The lines that were around my flowers there. Just a damp towel. That's all you need. And if you do your tracing with a, uh, if you trace it and you do it with a your saran paper, you should be able to wipe off or sorrel. I'm sorry, sorrel is the brand. This one is water soluble transfer paper and uh, that's like my new favorite thing so because you can do the same thing with it it'll wipe right off all right so we're pretty close i think i want to do a little bit more white on this before i put my ladybug down but i'm happy with my centers and my flowers my daisies look pretty good So any of these paints and brushes that you've been using, just keep them in the water or keep them damp. You don't have to keep them in the water. You don't want to keep them in the water because it'll split the wood. The The wood will get wet underneath and it'll, it'll uh, split it. The wood will expand and it'll, the chip paint will chip off. Your, I have a lot of paint brushes that can testify to being left in the water too long. So be nicer to your brushes than I am. I'm getting better about remembering to take them out of the water, but I get so into what I'm doing, I forget sometimes. It's not like you're doing a show or anything. Well, like I got a million other things to think about. Well, I did it before the show, so, so I had no excuse. It's not a new phenomenon. Okay, so just adding one more layer of white there to some of these to brighten them up. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so let's add our little ladybug. It's gonna be so cute. Stand it. My whatever. <laughs> to the max. Okay, before I do though, I'm kind of. To splattering, I want to splatter, so I'm gonna use green. I'm gonna use this green here that's in the stems, and I'm just gonna lightly splatter this background, especially the ones that are kind of in the back. Back, if you don't want it over the top ones, you can kind of cover them a little bit, or you don't have to do this at all if you don't want to do it. Just add water to your paint, whatever color you choose to use, and tap it. Hold it. Hold onto the brush with one hand and tap with the other. And it'll come off. There we go. So I'm just gonna use this and dab. This will soften up the colors and if they're on any of these that you don't want, just use more water. Use a really got a lot right here in the middle. Maybe a little too much. You could use white. You could use whatever color you want. White will be a little bit more subtle than the green, but I think it, I like splattering. I don't know. That's my thing. I noticed the painting in our bathroom that's from like, 2005 probably 2006 it's all splattered up it's like the water lilies in there I thought I was doing it then <laughs> no we no one's gonna stop me from splattering <laughs> I so long long I don't think I'll ever be cured of it 
<laughs> it's a problem. Splatter Anonymous. It's a thing. Splatterers Anonymous. The first step is admitting. Yeah, that's true. See, I'd have to think that it wasn't awesome if, you know. <laughs> All right, so our little ladybug's going to have kind of a rounded shape here. Super cuteness. bit of blue to darken up. My red. Use that on the bottom edge right here. I'm gonna say at this point it could go either ladybug or tick. <laughs> so depending on what you want to Ticks paint. Ticks aren't red. Although they can be kind of a group, they're cu they're cute until they're in swarms. Then they're just like scary. Ticks or ladybugs? Ladybugs. <laughs> Both. Both. Anything. Pretty much that applies to anything. <laughs> All right, so I mix up a little bit brighter red with the chamomile red light there. That's so, pretty much the only place we're using those. So which brush good. did you pick up to do that with? Uh, I've got the number one round. Mm -hmm. Here, now I'm going to Uno Rondo. get the number two ot two over zero. And go have my black. And this part is look like a heart shape, so we're gonna kinda do a heart shape right here. And it's really I kinda went a little outside my boundaries there. Let me see if I can fix it without Tearing up my flower. There we go. Okay. Now keep it kind of in line with your with your ladybug back. So it's kind of I went a little too far outside that boundary there. I'm gonna keep it inside that. Line there, so I'm grab my red again, put that in here. Slight, it's not really a point, but it's kind of a little bit more pointy at this end. Not completely round. That painting, that paint is getting sticky. That first coat is getting sticky. Okay, adding a little highlight right here with that cadmium red light, just right up in here. Blending out the edge just a little bit. I did a larger ladybug, so if you want to see that, actually it was on a daisy also, so maybe they like daisies. Who knows? Uh, but our other ladybug was painted on a daisy too. Getting a little bit more black here. I'm going to do the little head, so it's just kind of above it in a little round, rounded oval kind of shape. And then there's like a leg off the side here. You're not really seeing much of the legs, so you don't have to worry too much about that. There's the little pokey, pokey outy things right here. I don't know what those are, but little antennas or something. And then I'm going to do a few 
few spots. So there's one kind of right here in the back. One over here, one over here, right here. And then there's the little bit darker red line that goes along the back of it from the top. Grabbing the white. There's two little tiny dots, so if you want to, you could use like a toothpick or something like that or the head of a pin or whatever makes it easier if you find using a brush harder to a little couple little dots right here and here and then I'm gonna flatten my brush out and do my little two little spots that are right here in here boy this paint is starting to get sticky so it's just fighting me every little thing is fighting me probably ought to put out fresh paint but I'm being lazy so I just need fresh paint. It's just too sticky. I'm having all kinds of issues with it. I lifted it off so I don't have like this caked up thing of red when I get my layers on here. It's just not going on smoothly so I'm putting out fresh paint because it's going to keep having issues if I don't just fix it. Fresh black, fresh, in fact I'm going to use the fluid black so it's even easier. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to find it's a thousand times easier I have a feeling. this whole thing in again. Sorry guys. And this ladybug's getting bigger as we go. It's just keeps it's eating. It's just getting massive. Started out small, but it's getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. I just want to give a shout out to whoever invented the spell check. Really? Why? Because sometimes it can save your bacon, make you look like, save you from making yourself look like a total fool. Mm-hmm. Why were you doing? 
you don't want to know how I was trying to spell nutrition. I'm just saying. <laughs> Are we talking about nutrition now? Well, so the story starts with uh, mm-hmm. people wondering what container you're using for your water. And so right. I tell them it's an old grapefruit container. Right. And they were wondering about the ridges and things like that. So for a period of time there where you were putting out new paint, Mm -hmm. I zoomed in on the side cam onto the water container so they could see. Right. And then I said, well, make sure you get the nutrition facts too because you can see the label also. Uh, Unfortunately, spell check saved me. When you were trying to joke. Well, no, because nutrition is not spelled like electrician. So, (laughs) just saying. Okay, I don't even, I'm not going to even ask. Well, electrician is ends with C-I-A-N, and nutrition ends with T-I-O-N. Right. So, not the same. So, <laughs> you thought, yeah. okay, I'm not. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm I gonna did. I'm going to make fun of you. Yeah, well, no, so it's I'm okay, not. it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead, make fun of me. It's all right. Let the hate mail come in. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I got another things about being mean to you. I'm being oppressed. Uh huh. I'm degrading you again. <laughs> that's what they said. I was degrading you. Degrading. Yeah, I was degrading. But I'll have to be upgraded You're first. So awesome. How dare I? Okay, so this paint is getting super thick here. I'm trying to put these layers on before the previous layer is drying, and so they're ending up getting thick. But, uh, all right, so I fixed my little ladybug. Here is the right color and shape and everything now. Use that darker color to put my little thing down the middle. Let's try our spots again. Should work this time. And if you need to, you can use an even smaller brush than I'm using. I do have the spotter out. I think I'm going to grab that for the last few little details here. It'll make it a little bit easier. The spotter is just like a liner brush, but it's got really tiny, short bristles. So there's really small bristles, and they're just really, really short. So it makes it super easy to get in tight here, and can add these little details in here. I feel like. I'm not doing this poor ladybug justice. Two hours later. Yeah, I know. That's what it feels like, doesn't it? All right, let's get the white here. So let's do the white right there. And these look like eyes, but they're not actually the eyes. There, and I put that one too low, so let's move it up. This one's smaller, and it's just like right in here. It's not you're not seeing as much of it as this one. It really is kind of a rectangle shape. So this one is, because he's not straight on. That's why I'm kind of... I don't think I'm going to put the legs in because it just making it look weird to me. I, it just, it looks weird. It's bugging me. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to grab some of my red, some white. I'm going to add some yellow to make it brighter. Somebody wants to know if the bristles stay together on that brush. I guess if they're tight. Yes, they do. They do. Okay. 
Add a little bit of bright highlight right there. There's a little bit right here too. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the white with the gray, white and black make gray. Use that on here and put a highlight on the black part right there and on the head. And there's two tiny little dots right here on the head if I can get them in there without making them look funky. I think we did it this time. Whew. He's so tiny as well. Honestly, I think you could probably do him with with the like the back end of your brush easier than I was doing it with the actual brush. You could probably dot in most of his body and stuff parts without going into so much detail. Maybe a little bit easier. I'm going to glaze a little bit of the darker orangey color. Just use a little bit of glaze and a little bit of the orange with cadmium red light and the yellow oxide color. That was the underneath color of the daisy. And I'm just going to kind of glaze it on in here. I'm going to add a little bit of the brighter orange to the back of my ladybug. It still looks crooked. I need to fix him. Well, his back is crooked right here. I, I need to angle this in like this right here there. there we go I know I'm sorry you're like is it time for bed it's just about in it that right there could be a video in its own. What? Just the ladybug? How to paint a ladybug. <laughs> uh, it is. He's taking a long time, isn't he? Sorry. But this is what I love and your fans love about you is your attention to detail. And then you won't let it go that you don't just settle for it. Yeah, there's well, some red. It looks funky. I just can't do it. There's can't some red it. paint there with some black and okay, we're good. Good enough. Mm -mm. No, I mean, you really take the time and show that sometimes even you struggle to get it right. You know, you're not just whipping it out the first time. And Well, yeah, I mean, painting is a process. It's never, I've never, I don't think, well, people say I make it easy, look easy, but I don't know if that, that sometimes I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I make it harder than it needs to be. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, yeah, it is a process, so you're just gonna have to be patient with it. And, you know, it's easy to get frustrated, and sometimes, like you know, it might be if if I couldn't figure out what it was about the painting that I didn't like, you know, I would just walk away. And and there are times that I do that. You know, there are a lot of times where, and there are a lot of times when I'm doing these paintings for YouTube that I, you know, get done with it and I look at it and I go, oh. I should have done X, Y, Z, you know. True that. And so, you know, it's just, it's not a magic formula, mm -hmm. you know. It's just a process. 
Because if we, through it. as we've said before, that when you're doing canvases or paintings for commission right. work, that you'll paint and you get it to a certain point, and then mm-hmm. she brings it out into the living room and sets mm-hmm. it in the corner so that she can look at it several times, different times mm-hmm. a day, different lighting, different angles, and sees, and then she'll bring it back into the studio and keep painting on it, and right, you know, so yeah, it's very um, rare that I'll finish a painting in one setting. Like I do for these videos, you know. So right, I mean, the, the videos are very unique. We do this because it's a tutorial we want to show from start to finish. Right. So it's not indicative to what you might be doing in real life. Right, and you'll have more time to really work out the details. And a lot of times I'll see you guys' paintings, and they're way better than mine. And I'm like, well, there you go. Mm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it should have been done. I showed you how to start it. They finished it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I get a little bit, a little bit jealous when I see that. <laughs> I'm like, ah, yep, that was it. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking, but I love it. I love it. I love seeing your art and what you do with the paintings and stuff and kind of your versions of them. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to my... Let me mill the light here on just a few of these just to kind of, and I'm just using the, this brush here, the filbert here. All right, we need to end because it's two yeah. hours long. But I was just going to say that if they haven't already, if they're new, click the mm-hmm. show more arrow below this video. And mm-hmm. down below there's a links to Facebook group. Yeah, that's a closed group. It's monitored. It's moderated, right? Uh, so that you can share your work in a in a safe, private environment for right for welcome critiques or not. It, you know, mm-hmm. whatever you want, and it's just to share and support uh, each other. And that one, the thankful artist for my tutorials, mm-hmm. and I have one called Angeluni that I share with Cinnamon Cooney, Angela Cooney. Get it? Angeluni. They came Angeluni? up with that themselves. I did. They, yeah. They cracked themselves up. We did. And uh, <laughs> that one is for sharing whatever, sharing whatever mm-hmm. you know, or whatever you want to, as long as you're not a, like a professional. It's for, it's for student art. It's not for professionals right. Correct. trying to promote themselves. Yep. So anyhow, yeah. Um, and then there's Patreon. But both groups are really great and they're both moderated. So really kind people in there and you. If you're mean, you get booted. So, yep. pretty much no meanies, no negative comments. Uh, it's a really safe space. And we're very, very strict about the the comments, too. And we're not joking when we say we beat, beat people out because it happens oh, yeah. almost every month, if not every month. <laughs> yep, it's true. You know, it's, we really do. <laughs> it's there. we got a good group of moderators that keep an eye on things. They do. So it's and the people in there, will, you know, yeah, they're very, very nice folks. It's really great. There's too much crud in the world to have to deal with it. Yeah. When you're trying to enjoy yourself painting. So. Right. Yeah. This is a safe spot. All right, guys. Oh, I noticed. Okay, I just threw away my palette, and I just noticed there's a shadow underneath. Well, it, you so better I get out your palette. Put that in. I do want to put that in. I'm going to pull my palette back out here. And while she does that, I'll talk about Patreon.com/slash okay. Angela Fine Art can support I the channel. I did mention that, but yeah, go ahead. Well, you, you didn't can. have the cool graphic up like I did. Oh, that's true, I didn't. See, exactly. So you can do the I'm dollar. I'm burnt umber and, or not, sorry, ultramarine blue here and white. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's go. okay. Uh, just a you know, dollar a month for traceables. It helps support the channel. And then there's also $5 level, $10 level where you get bonus videos. Uh, $10 level gives you access to another private Facebook group where there's more tutorials. Yep, we and do also them on Thursdays. You can share your own artwork also on there for critique and comments and stuff like that. Angela really devotes a lot of time to that group. And I'm trying to put together the million dollar level for Bill Gates and those who, <laughs> who really want to do that. But so I don't think that's going to happen, honey. You never know. You just never know and who, who will be laughing at who when it does. I'm just saying. Maybe Ellen needs to learn how to paint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to try to get Chip and Joanne to get involved. But I know. 
<laughs> All righty, guys. There we go. I put it. I added a few little uh, with that shadow color. I just added a few little separations between some of the petals up here too. Just a little extra detail, but there's our little ladybug all finished up, and he's got his little shadow underneath him now, so he makes looks a little bit more settled on his daisy. Hope you try this. I'm going to sign it, and we're going to call it good, and Mark's going to hopefully get some dinner before he has to go. Yeah, to and so what are we painting on Saturday? We are going to be painting a calla lily, so we're doing more flowers. Ooh, more I can't, flowers. I can't believe a row. it. Wow flowers i know it's hmm. weird <laughs> all right guys so. thanks so much we'll see you saturday uh give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you haven't already and uh, we'll see you next time bye <laughs>